Hi, I'm David Stein of Money for the Rest of Us. This is a channel on money, investing in the economy. And today we're looking at mortgages. Should you pay off your home mortgage early out of your investment portfolio? How do you make that decision? Well, we're going to look at three principles to understand this decision, as well as some mathematical examples that you can understand and be more informed so that you make the right decision about whether you should pay off your mortgage or not. Now, we're looking at this financially. There are other reasons to pay off your mortgage, just that feeling of being unencumbered. That's why LaPro and I paid off our mortgage early. But then when mortgage rates got so low, as we see here, mortgage rates all-time lows, close to 3%, we took out another mortgage. And now we can benefit from some of the principles that we're talking about here. Let's look then at the three principles. The first is, if you pay off your mortgage, your investment portfolio goes down, your home equity goes up, but your overall net worth stays the same. There is no increase in net worth simply by paying off your mortgage. And again, we'll go through a mathematical example so you can see that. Because of that, the only reason financially to pay off your mortgage is if your overall investment earnings go up. And we'll see under what circumstances that occurs in this video. The second principle then is if you pay off your mortgage from your bonds and cash, then your overall portfolio risk stays the same. But if you pay off that mortgage from your stock portfolio, your overall portfolio risk goes down. Now, these principles need some examples. So let's go through. Here we have a balance sheet. The house is worth a million dollars. There's a half million dollars in stocks a half million dollars in bonds and cash, so total assets are $2 million. There's a half million dollar mortgage, so if we take those assets, subtract the liability, the mortgage, the overall net worth is 1.5 million. Now, if we pay off that mortgage from the bonds and cash, the mortgage goes down to zero, the total assets, the investment portfolio, falls to 1.5 million, and the net worth is the same, 1.5 million. If we don't pay it off, our net worth is 1.5 million, and if we do, our net worth is 1.5 million. Now, let's look at an example where a portfolio, in this case, we've not paid off the mortgage, the stocks fall 50%. We want to look at the risk of where this mortgage is paid off. So, if stocks fall 50%, we've not paid off our mortgage, our overall net worth is 1.25 million, down from 1.5 million because the stocks are now worth half what they were. Now, if we had paid off that mortgage out of bonds and cash, and again, stocks fall 50%, our net worth is the same, 1.25 million after the stock market loss. There it is when you still have the mortgage. There it is when the mortgage is paid off. With those losses, the overall net worth, 1.25 million. Now, what if we pay off the mortgage partially from stocks and partially from bonds, 250,000 out of each. Again, our net worth is 1.5 million. In this scenario, if stocks fall 50%, look, our net worth is actually isn't hurt as much when we pay off some of that mortgage from the stock portfolio. The net worth is now 1.375 million. Had we paid off that mortgage completely from the bond portfolio, our net worth would be lower at 1.25 million. Well, wouldn't we just want the higher net worth and pay it off from stocks and bonds? Not necessarily. If we have less than stocks, then our potential earnings will be lower going forward. We won't make as much on our portfolio because we'll have taken less risk. So the point is, we need to understand where the, the money came from. We need to understand that if we pay off that mortgage, that it won't change our net worth. But if we pay off that mortgage from stocks instead of bonds, then our overall portfolio risk will be lower having paid it off with stocks than it would had we not paid off the mortgage at all. So let's go and you might want to watch this video a couple times just to understand these principles. I, have, I also have a podcast where we went over the same that I'll link to in the show notes. Let's go ahead and look at that third principle. 
In this case, we want to look at that after-tax return or expected return on the bond portfolio or cash portfolio and compare that to the after-tax interest rates on the mortgage. Mortgages, at least in the U.S., the interest is tax deductible. And in the U.S., your income on your bonds and cash portfolio, you have to pay taxes on it. Now, what we can do is compare those two after-tax elements, the after-tax yield or expected returns on the bonds and cash compared to the after-tax interest rate on the mortgage. Now, we can tax effects our mortgage by taking the pre-tax interest rate, in this case, let's say it's 3%, and multiply it by one minus our marginal tax rate. And our marginal tax rate is the highest tax rate that we pay on that last dollar worth of income. Now we can do that same calculation, one minus the marginal tax rate, to figure out the after-tax yield on our bond portfolio. We can look at the yield to maturity or the SEC yield, and multiply it by one minus the marginal tax rate. And then we're able to compare both of those. Again, if the mortgage rate is higher than that expected return on the bond portfolio after adjusting for taxes, then we're better off paying off that mortgage early because our overall investment earnings will be higher. Let's go through an example. Here again, we have a million dollar house, 500,000 in stocks, 500,000 in bonds, and the 500,000 mortgage. Our overall net worth is 1.5 million. In this case, we've added an earnings component. We'll assume stocks are earning 6%, bonds and cash 3%, and the mortgage is 3%. These are all after-tax returns. Our overall net earnings after backing out the mortgage interest is $30,000. If we pay off that mortgage out of bonds and cash, our overall net earnings is still $30,000 because in this example, the bonds and cash, that after-tax interest rate and the after-tax earnings on the bond portfolio are the same. Now, if the mortgage interest rate is higher than the yield on bonds and cash, in this case, this is before we pay off the mortgage, net earnings is $20,000. If we pay off that mortgage out of the bond portfolio, as we do in this example, the overall net earnings is higher because we were paying more interest on the mortgage than we were earning with bonds and cash. The yields were different. The yield was 1% on the bond portfolio and the interest rate on the mortgage was 3%. So again, the principle is we need to compare the two. What is that after-tax interest rate on the mortgage? And what, is, what are we getting on our bonds and cash? If that mortgage rate is higher than the bond and cash yield after adjusting for taxes, then we're better paying off our mortgage early because our overall investment earnings will be higher. Now, hey, a little complicated, but that's the math. So watch the video again. Look at the examples in that I went through, and that'll help you understand these very important process of whether you should pay off your mortgage early. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. Thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it, and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks.